my name's Nikki. I'd like to read you a story called The Panicosaurus. It's by K.I. Algani with illustrations by Haytham Algani. It's a story about a little girl and the Panicosaurus. The Panicosaurus tells the little girl that everything in the world is bad and scary. Luckily, the little girl's parents introduce her to the Smartosaurus, who reminds her that she is brave and clever and strong and she can manage. Sometimes during the story, I'll stop reading so I can ask you a question or tell you something I think is really interesting. You can pause the video and have a think about what I've said, or you can just carry on listening to the story. I won't mind. Shall we begin? It was a crisp Monday morning in May. Mabel Green was feeling especially happy because after school that day, she would be going to the toy shop with Mummy to buy a new picture puzzle. Mabel had earned her puzzle by learning how to sleep right through the night. Ever since she could remember, Mabel had been afraid to go to bed. As soon as Mummy or Daddy covered her up with the quilt and kissed her goodnight, Mabel's breathing would quicken. Her heart would start thumping in her chest and she would feel hot and sweaty. She didn't know why, but her head would be full of a whole bunch of what-if questions. What if Mummy and Daddy go out? What if I am all alone in the house? What if there are monsters hiding in the cupboard? These pesky questions would frighten Mabel so much that she would throw back her quilt, jump out of bed and flip on the light. Then, one restless night, Daddy told Mabel all about the Panicosaurus. He told her that she did not have to listen to the Panicosaurus. She could learn to listen to Smartosaurus instead. Smartosaurus told Mabel there was no danger. It was just Panicosaurus playing tricks because he was bored. If she wanted Panicosaurus to go away, she must first learn to do some deep breathing. Can you see? Smartosaurus in this picture is bigger than Panicosaurus. That means Mabel's learning something new. Learning to breathe properly was easy when Mabel lay on her tummy because she could feel the air filling her chest. Daddy trained Mabel to breathe in deeply on account of two, three, four, and then blow out the breath saying, Panicosaurus. This slowed down Mabel's breathing and her heart would stop racing and Panicosaurus would begin to lose his power over her. Would you like to try Mabel's breathing exercise? Let's do it together. Sit up nice and straight. Big breath in through your nose. Two, three, four. And then out through your mouth saying Panicosaurus. That was fun. I wonder how Mabel gets on. Shall we find out? As soon as Mabel had learned how to breathe properly, Daddy devised a plan. He promised he would come into Mabel's room every five minutes to check on her. Mabel had to promise to try and stay in bed and concentrate on her breathing to blow out that Panicosaurus. The first time they tried it, five minutes seemed like a very long time. So Daddy said not to worry, they would try for two minutes. Little by little, as Mabel practised her breathing, she built up to 15 whole minutes and then she fell fast asleep. Daddy bought her a little torch that looked like a penguin, her favourite creature, so that instead of getting out of bed to put on the light, she could flick on the torch and tell the Panicosaurus to go away because everything was okay. Each morning, after a successful sleep, Mabel was given some tiddlywinks to put in a jar and when she had collected enough, she would get a picture puzzle. Mabel was working on getting enough tiddlywinks for a thousand piece puzzle. On the way to school one morning, Mabel got into a panic. Coming down the street towards her was a dog. Panicosaurus told her that dogs bark. Dogs bite. Dogs are dangerous. 
Mabel felt like she wanted to run, but Mummy had fast hold of her hand. What did Smartosaurus tell us to do? Take a deep breath and sing. Dogs are loyal, dogs are true. If they're on a lead, they won't bother you. Look at his tail, does it wag as he walks? No need to listen to the Panicosaurus talk. Smartosaurus knew that Panicosaurus hated singing. It stops his power almost immediately. Mabel took a deep breath, blew out the Panicosaurus and sang along with Mummy. Before they could say bow wow, the dog had passed by and Mabel smiled. Gosh, Mabel, that was fantastic. I'm putting 25 tiddlywinks in your jar just as soon as I get home, said Mummy proudly. I love dogs. We've got a crazy dog called Marley. But I think it would be easy to be frightened of dogs if you don't have one at home and if one comes bouncing up to you in the street, especially if the Panicosaurus is telling you that everything is scary and frightening. Do you think singing a song would help you feel better if you were so frightened? Mummy left Mabel at the school gate. Enjoy your day, darling. See you after school. Remember, we are going to the toy shop, she reminded Mabel encouragingly. Mabel used to be afraid of the playground and she would often start crying when the time came for Mummy to leave. One time, she even ran after Mummy into the busy road and almost got knocked over by a car. So, with the help of Smartosaurus, Mummy devised a cunning playground plan to fight off that pesky Panicosaurus. On the playground, there was a big green circle. It was Mabel's green spot. When the Panicosaurus threatened to surface, Mabel would run to stand on her spot, reach into her bag and bring out the pot of bubbles that she always carried with her. Taking a deep breath, she would blow out the bubbles and all the children would charge around her, trying to pop them without stepping on the green spot. The laughter of the excited children kept Panicosaurus at bay. Smartosaurus knew that Panicosaurus couldn't bear to hear laughter. It just saps him of all his power. Can you see Mabel's green circle? It makes her feel safe to stand in it and all the children know not to go into the circle and get too close to Mabel and make her feel uncomfortable. And look, because Mabel is blowing the bubbles and all the children are running around and chasing them and they're all giggling and having a good time, Panicosaurus has shrunk and gone further away. Smartosaurus is pretty smart, isn't he? Soon it was time to go indoors and in the bustling cloakroom, Mabel could not find the peg with her name over it. She scanned the rows of pegs, but her name was not there. A sense of panic swept over her as Panicosaurus whispered in her ear, What if this is not your school? What if the children don't know you? He challenged. One of the classroom assistants, Mrs White, noticed the anxious look on Mabel's face. Taking her by the hand, she led Mabel to her peg. As they walked, she sang. We're off to find our peg, we're off to find our peg. e i d l e o we're off to find our peg. Mabel noticed that the name card had fallen down onto the floor. Mrs White bent over to pick it up and help Mabel to fix it back in place. Mabel smiled gratefully at Mrs White. In the classroom, the children took their seats, but Mabel couldn't see her teacher, Mrs Pink. Where was she? Perhaps she had fallen down like the name card, Mabel joked to herself. Before she had time to ask one of her classmates about Mrs Pink, the door opened and in walked a tall young man. Good morning, children, he called out. My name is Mr Grey. I'll be your teacher for today because Mrs Pink is not feeling very well, he explained to them kindly. After the incidents with the dog and the label in the cloakroom, this change to Mabel's day was all it took to make the Panicosaurus particularly bothersome. 
Mabel sprang out of her seat and scrambled under the table like a frightened rabbit. Mrs Pink was Mabel's favourite teacher and pink was her favourite colour. She could not possibly like anyone with a name that was the colour grey. Poor Mabel. Sometimes, if I've had a difficult morning and my routine has been interrupted, I feel like just getting back into bed again and hiding from the world. Do you ever feel like that? Who helps you feel better if you do feel sad? Mr Grey began to call out the register, but when he got to Mabel's name, there was no reply. Where is Mabel? Mr Grey asked the class. Under the table, chanted the children. Under the table, echoed Mr Grey in disbelief. Mabel Green, get out from under that table at once, he ordered sternly. The children looked at each other anxiously. Um, it's all right, Mr Grey, explained a girl called Trudy Bell rather nervously. Mabel sometimes goes under the table when she feels afraid. Mr Grey raised his eyebrows and carried on calling the register. Isn't Trudy Bell being brave? She's being kind to Mabel, even though it means challenging an adult she doesn't know. I think Mabel's very lucky to have a friend like Trudy. Under the table, Mabel was battling with the Panicosaurus. What if Mr Grey does not let you do your puzzle at lunch time? Panicosaurus goaded. Mabel remembered what Mrs Pink had taught her. Taking a deep breath, she clenched her toes tightly and pushed her feet hard into the ground. Then she breathed out slowly, whispering, Panicosaurus. Taking another deep breath, she squeezed her legs together tightly. Then she breathed out slowly, saying, Panicosaurus. A third deep breath meant Mabel must push her palms together as hard as she could. Then out came the breath with a Panicosaurus. Mrs Pink had told her to throw those what-if questions right back at the Panicosaurus. So Mabel said defiantly, What if Mr Grey is a lovely, kind teacher who knows all about my puzzle making at lunchtime? What if you just go away and leave me alone? Panicosaurus slunk back into the amygdala and Mabel crept out from under the table and sat in her chair. The children were greatly relieved when they saw Mabel back in her seat and they gave her the thumbs up sign. Mabel began to relax. Soon the morning was over and it was time for the children to line up for lunch. Usually, after lunch, Mabel returned to the classroom to work on her jigsaw puzzle. Today it was Martin Brown's turn to stay in class and keep her company. Mabel was looking forward to the afternoon lessons. It was always cookery on a Monday. This week they were going to make a witch's pot full of vegetable soup. All the children had been told which vegetables to bring and they were going to take some of the soup home for tea. Mabel was going to prepare the carrots. Mrs Pink had asked the children to think up a little rhyming couplet to say as they added the vegetables to the pot. Mummy had helped Mabel to think of one and she was going to say, When the soup is bubbling hot, Put the carrots in the pot. Why do you think Mabel stays inside at lunchtime? Do you think it's helpful for her? If you were in Mabel's school, would you be happy to take a turn keeping her company like Martin Brown has? When Mr Grey returned to the classroom, he moved the arrow along the timetable and then replaced the cookery symbol with a painting symbol. No, no, that cannot be right, thought Mabel, beginning to feel funny inside. Mrs Pink had promised they would make vegetable soup. She had carrots waiting to be chopped and added to the pot. I'm sorry, children, explained Mr Grey. 
I'm afraid I don't have the necessary equipment with me to do cookery, so I think we should do some painting instead. All the children were disappointed, but this further change to Mabel's routine was just too much to take, and she became distraught. Her eyes filled with tears and her hands began to shake and her tummy felt painful. Before Mr Grey could say anything more, Mabel was under the table, head in her arms, sobbing. Poor Mabel! Look, you can see the Panicosaurus is enjoying that Mabel is feeling quite upset because he's got even bigger. Do you ever feel upset like that at school? What helped you? Where's Mabel? asked Mr Grey with concern. But he knew the answer. She was back under the table. All the children in the class looked so sad as they heard Mabel's sobs. Trudy asked if she could go into Mrs Pink's cupboard. Once there, she found a large box with Mabel's name on it and inside she found a blanket, a stuffed penguin, a torch, and Mabel's silly Panicosaurus book. Trudy quickly threw the blanket over the table and gently pushed the lighted torch into Mabel's den, together with the penguin and the book. Then she softly repeated Mrs Pink's mantra. I feel calm. I feel safe. I am happy in this place. Taking her stuffed penguin in her arms, Mabel picked up the torch and opened the silly Panicosaurus book. It was filled with pictures of the Panicosaurus looking quite ridiculous. Mrs Pink had set the class a challenge to draw the Panicosaurus, but to make him look very funny. There was Panicosaurus dressed like a clown, Panicosaurus in a funny hat with cross eyes, Panicosaurus in a nappy with a baby's bottle and a dummy in his mouth, and many, many more. Mabel could not help herself. She started to smile. Slowly, a little corner of the blanket was lifted, and Mr Grey gave Mabel a heated pad that smelled of lavender. Mabel held it to her tummy, and she began to relax. Trudy gave her a beaker of water with a fitted straw. Mabel took a sip, and then slowly, but surely, she began to feel calm. After about half an hour, Mabel was ready to come out. Blinking in the light of the afternoon sun, she sat down in her chair and looked around the room. Trudy smiled at her and gave her the thumbs up sign. Mabel enjoyed painting and she decided she would paint a picture of some penguins so everything was going to be okay. Trudy put Mabel's special things away in her relaxation box. At the end of the school day, Mr Grey had a quiet word with Mabel's mum and they found a special story in the relaxation box which explained that sometimes teachers were ill and a substitute teacher would be in charge of the class. Mrs Green said she would read it with Mabel that night when she was ready for bed. Just before home time, Mr Grey thanked Mabel's class for all their help, especially Trudy. He told them he had learned a great deal that day and he would be sure to tell Mrs Pink what a fine class of caring children she had. To show his appreciation, he was going to bring them a class pet, a little hamster named Buster. He showed the children a picture of Buster and they all cheered. They felt proud and happy as they left for home that day. Meanwhile, after picking up her new picture puzzle from the toy shop, Mabel was relieved to reach home. It had been a hard day as the Panicosaurus had been so troublesome. However, Mabel was confident that she would control that naughty creature whenever she needed to. By listening to the Smartosaurus, she was already well on the way to getting that puzzle with 1,000 pieces. Poor Mabel, what a day! She must have been exhausted by the time she got home, but maybe a little bit proud too, because even though it had been a difficult day, she had overcome the Panicosaurus.
I think it would be a good challenge for you to draw some silly Panicosauruses. What would yours have? I might make mine purple with yellow spots. I'll see you soon. Bye.